499. We are joined by A.J. Almendinger, driver the number 47, Bush Bean Chevrolet, who will start third in Sunday's race. A.J., talk a little bit about your run out there and your thoughts on the new qualifying format. Yeah, it was uh, it was interesting out there for sure. Uh, more than anything, it was just a, a, a great plan by uh, everybody at RCR, uh, the Alliance, and uh, you know just getting us all the uh, RCR and all the R RCR Alliance cars working together. Um, uh, you know, we kind of worked on that a little bit yesterday and felt like all the cars had a uh, good speed. Uh, you know, ECR builds such such great motors, such uh, so much horsepower here. So uh, it's just a good plan, and and uh, you know, got to get a little bit lucky there. Ryan was kind of the guinea pig the whole time for us, uh, but you know, kind of timed it right. And, and in that last session, it was just basically who uh, who was going to wait the longest to go out there. And um, you know, it's good for us to uh, to get the Bushes being Chevy up front. You know, starting position. Uh, isn't that important here, but to, to get all the uh, RCR Alliance cars and RCR cars up front together, it's a good thing, so uh, worked out. Also joining us is Paul Menard, driver of the number 27 Richmond Menard Chevrolet, who will start second in Sunday's race. Talk a little bit about your thoughts on your qualifying run out there and, and the new format as well. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, this whole qualifying format, I think there's good tracks for it and bad tracks for it, and this is definitely a, a great track for it. Uh, I thought it added a lot of excitement. Um, we had a plan that we uh, we talked about it last night and talked about it again this morning, um, all the RCR cars and the affiliates, and uh, we, we, we tried to stick to the plan as best we could. It kind of got messed up a little bit the first uh, uh, outing, but for the most part, we all we all kind of stuck to our plan, and, and Ryan, we put the burden on him to kind of decide when to go and where to go, and uh, the rest of us just kind of held in line. So um, ECR top six and uh, RCR uh, cars all up there, so uh, pretty exciting. Also joining us, Austin Dillon, driver of the number three Bass Pro Shop Chevrolet, who will start fifth, but is our top qualifying rookie today. Your thoughts on qualifying and the significance at Talladega for the three? Yeah, I'm just uh, very proud of uh, RCR and affiliates. You know, we've been working hard to work together, and um, that that shows that it makes me really happy for RCR and ECR and everybody, just because um, we were able to stick together longer than the other teams, and um, that was uh, very cool and. Like Paul said, we put it on Ryan. Ryan deserves a lot of that credit uh, for you know telling you when to go and when when not to. And it was hard the uh, first session to just kind of stay with the plan because there was so much going on. And then second session, he did a great job of uh, of taking charge right there and getting in that second pack. And from then on, it was uh, it was really good. But I'm I'm happy to um, have a good starting position for the uh, Bass Pro Shop Chevy. And um, I think we've all got uh, good cars going into um, Sunday's race. Okay, we'll take questions for all three. We'll start right here in the middle at the back and then come up to Jenna. Jordan Bianchi, SBNation.com. You guys talked about Ryan Newman being the guinea pig. Can you t take me through how he was elected to be the guinea pig and what your team meeting was like pre-race and or pre-qualifying? Uh, I am I think Richard just kind of elected him, uh, made a, a, a call there. Um, it, it worked out. You know, Ryan's uh, he's one on the plate tracks. He's got the most experience out of all of us, so um, it, it made sense. Um, and he, you know, we, we kind of knew that uh, being the, the first guy, he's not going to win the poll. And being, um, I kind of volunteered to be the last guy because I feel like I've got a, probably the fastest car to try to push guys. I pretty much figured that I wasn't going to be on the poll either. So um, we kind of left it up to um, the guys in the middle. And, and Brian Scott uh, had to race his way in. And that was our number one priority is kind of put him in the middle to try to help him get in the race. And then from there, just kind of stick to our plan. OK, we'll come up front, Jenna. Jennifer Fryer, AP. I understand um, when a team mates work together, but you guys widen the circle to bring in all the affiliates. How did that decision come about? And you know, I guess for AJ, what do you say in those meetings? Do you just listen to what they tell you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they said you're going to work with all the RCR cars. I said perfect. That makes sense. Um, no, I mean it, it. You know, I think it just shows that that uh, you know more cars around here. You get more cars in line. It's going to be faster. And, uh, the, you know, the great thing about RCR and, and the ECR package is uh, we're all even. So it's not like, you know, we know their cars are way faster than ours. So um, it just made sense to get everybody lined up and, and uh, get us all in a pack. And, uh, you know, as these guys said, Ryan being the most experienced, you know, it, it was up to him when to go and, and when not to go. And, uh, you know, I think especially the last two runs there, uh, the last two groups, uh, he did a great job just because, um, you know, he timed it out to get behind that, that first big pack and that second group. And then uh, it was just a waiting game, that third one. And when he decided to go, it was the right time. So, um, you know, for us, 
we feel very fortunate, and, and Richard's been uh, so helping in, in this alliance. You know, he's opened the doors to his shop and, and given us a great opportunity to have good race cars every weekend to go out there and, and keep trying to build this one-car team and, and make us a better team as a whole. And, you know, I feel like if we can be better, hopefully we can bring something back to the RCR team, and um, it's been working out. So uh, when they said we're working together, I had no questions about it. Well, for RCR, I mean, I feel like um, uh, to compete with Hendrick Roush and all those guys and to have an edge, we got to use all of our affiliates. And just like AJ said, we have to use them on every track, and we're, we're working toward that and trying to get better to, to broaden what we have as a team. So moving forward, I mean, that, that's what we have to do, and this, this obviously paid off for us today. Okay, we'll take our next question in the back. Chris. Chris Knight, NASCAR Wire Service, behind the cameras. This is for AJ. Um, even though it doesn't matter here, how about your technical alliance with RCR? How has it impacted your race team, not only here this weekend, but all season long? I mean, I think uh, it's just been amazing for, for, uh, for our whole 47 race team just because, uh, you know, with the new rules package, uh, the rod height rules, uh, everything going into this season, there's so many variables for us to try to figure out and to have that alliance uh, not only to have fast race cars and fast motors in general, but uh, to have all the, the engineering help and the notes and everything that uh, RCR brings and really opens their doors for us to have uh, is just a, a huge help to our race team. You know, without it, I feel like, you know, we could easily be lost in, in just trying to figure out where we're at. And, and, you know, I think slowly we're getting there where our results are, are showing that, you know, last week having a sixth. And, um, you know, even though qualifying really doesn't matter here, uh, you know, to, to – get our sponsors, Bush's Beans, and, and all of our sponsors that we have on this on this race car just to get the exposure and show that we can slowly start working to race with the bigger race teams is a big deal for us. So, um, you know, at this point in the season, I couldn't be any happier with where we're at and, and with the help that RCR has given us and, uh, you know, to where I think our race team is, is slowly getting to. Next question, Ed. Ed Hinton, ESPN.com. AJ is... I mean, is one of the <laughs> relatively seasoned drivers up here in the top four or five, and starting third. Does that mean I'm old? God, has it been that well, long did, already? Did, did, did I say old? Seasoned. I, I said seasoned. I'm like different. a fine wine, I get better with age. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. okay. Uh, as as fine wine starting third. <laughs> it's old's not bad when you're the rich kid. Is when it's bad, you know. <laughs> hey. I'd rather take being the rich kid. <laughs> Screw that. Anyway, back to the question. All right, go ahead. Being old and rich. Start and th start yeah. <laughs> okay, let's oh, go ahead. Come on. All right. Starting third up there with your experience, do you feel like that you've got as good a shot as any to lead the first lap or several laps of this race tomorrow? You know, I mean, I think for me it's just uh, I haven't had the best results here. So uh, it's just if we can fall in line and, uh, you know, as these guys said, having – uh, six or seven Alliance cars and, and RCR cars starting up front, uh, you know, I'd just be happy to, to fall in line and, and run there for a while. Um, you know, the easiest way to try to miss a wreck is be up front. So, um, you know, it's it, it's great if we can go out there and lead, fantastic. But if not, uh, if we can just kind of fall in line and, and just start pacing the race and, and do that, uh, I'm happy with that. Final question, staying up front. Stan Creekmore with RPM tonight.com and, and really to all three of you. How much how much of the camaraderie do you carry over into the race tomorrow and at what point do you say, oh, it doesn't matter who's around me, I want to win. It, it's not about teammates any longer. Well, it's always about teammates. You just don't want to intentionally screw one of them up. Uh, you know, our, our plan going into today was to work together, and if, if it worked out where uh, you put in a position where you couldn't, um, like Martin and I were in the first session, uh, we had some uh, slower cars jumping in front of us, and we had to abort and do our own thing, and uh, I made it, Martin didn't. Um, then our plan worked for the second session and the third session, and the race is going to be the same thing. You're going to work with your guys when you can, um, and there's going to be times we get separated, and you just have to go uh, do your own thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, you work with them as long as you can. I think um, we'll have another meeting like we did before qualifying probably and figure out how we can uh, keep our sponsors and cars up front as long as we can. And, man, these races are so crazy. Things happen, and you just got to 
do whatever, man. It's it's uh, one of the juniors, probably one of the best here. And he told me that you have no friends when you get out there, but I feel like our guys are working well together. So we just need to to work well, and then at the end, it's we just got to go and do what you can. It's it's it gets crazy. Okay, gentlemen, congratulations.